the yes, that's why the the body. That's why. That's why you survive because of that. So this emotion makes sure that you are alive. So it doesn't necessarily stops you. Maybe it fosters your escape. Now, the thoughts that you have when you have this emotion are related to the present, to the past, or to the future. What do you think? When we have fear, the present, the past, do we fear the past? What do we fear? What do you believe? It depends on, but there is one which is mostly? Mostly related with the future. It is mostly related with the future. What do we human beings fear? What we don't know. What is it that we don't know? Yes, because we have the previous experiences. That's why we fear the future. Mm? Okay? So this emotion is mostly associated with the future. When we have an important um, exam, do you remember your opposiciones? Did you have fear before the exam? So it is no. <laughs> um, so it is related to the future. Now, if this emotion is not properly handled, what do we have? What do you think? If this emotion is not properly handled, that's it. I was asking about, yes, I was asking about, you have fear. When you have fear, this emotion, um, if you don't handle this emotion, this emotion moves into another emotion. Which is the emotion you said? Sadness? So from fear, you move to sadness. Do you agree? From fear, we move to anger, to rage. Okay? That's why... What do we have here? Anger. That's why I come here now. Okay? So let's go back again. How do you feel anger in your body? Stressful, tension, muscle, stiffness, very nervous, irascible, I don't know the pronunciation, and exhausted. Do you agree? Do you agree? Anything to add? When we have anger, don't you feel that your face turns red? Yes. Do you know why? Yes. But why on our faces? Do you know why? Two? And do you know also why? Because in case you need to bite. So these emotions are emotions which make sure that our rights are kept, that no one intrudes in our areas. So in case we need to bite, our face is red. In case we need to attack, uh, which part of our body activates? Your legs, your hands, your, your arms. Do you know why? Fight. In that case, what activates is our legs our legs in case we need to go away. In both cases, our heart rate goes up and our breathing is shallow, quick. 
our blood pressure goes up in both cases. So these emotions are in our bodies. Now, once we have these in our bodies, we go to the next. Um, the reaction and the feelings that we have, the reaction is fight, fight. Or when we are in a conversation, we say something which can be hurtful. And the biological function, defense, defense, yes. So it is necessary, yes, we need to defend ourselves. Well, nowadays we don't have dinosaurs. Nowadays we don't have them. But um, sometimes you never know. <laughs> so you have that. Um, now the thoughts, do they belong to the past, to the present, or to the future? Rage, to the past, more the present. Yes, 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 but in the past, I'm talking about in the prehistorical past, it was a present. I'm trying to show you that what we feel today in our civilization comes from early on. So at that time, it was more present. Also, sometimes, and this happens now, it didn't happen in the past. Problems were solved immediately. Here, someone said something, you go crazy, you go mad. So you're thinking all the time, our monkey mind is going crazy and driving us crazy. But it, uh, when we have rage and anger, it belongs to the present. Yes? Now, if this emotion is not properly handled, what happens? We move from rage, we move to sadness. Okay? Now, hello guys, I'm here. Sadness, body sensations associated to that. What do you think? Tears in your eyes. You cry, more. Apathy. Apathy also, something else? Loneliness. Die. The body posture is slower. You don't smile. Yes, uh, okay, same. And caring and pessimist. Look, sadness is very, very different from fear and anger. Whereas um, we have activation like activation either to stay still, to run away, or to fight back. In this emotion, what we have is paralysis. Yes, paralysis, uh, relaxation somehow. Not to say that we are happy, but we are, our heart rate goes down, our blood pressure goes down. So it is different from the other two. Just think of Sadness, the main character in the film. She was all the time, okay. No energy at all, yes. So this emotion fosters what? Negative thoughts. And do you want to be around people when you are in feeling this? Isolation. And the biological function, when we feel sad, what do you think? Yes, look, when someone in the group has a problem and behaves differently, this is a call for attention. I'm not okay, so that the rest of the group reacts. So this is so essential, we are social beings. 
So this emotion is really necessary to bring groups together. In a group in which there is sadness, never, this group will not last. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain? So each of these um, emotions create a different type of relationship in the group. Mm -hmm. And which thoughts are associated with this emotion? Present, future, or past? Past. You look at the past, you regret something you said, or you miss someone who is no longer in your life. Maybe because this person died or because this person is no longer with you. So it looks more towards the past. So I, 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 don't, want, um, I don't want to just say that an emotion is only related to one time, one moment in time. Sometimes emotions, so it could also be the present. But I'm trying to give you like the most important moment to which they belong. Of course, anger has to do with the past as well. But when I say past or present, I'm trying to give you like um, the most important moment in time. And finally, if this emotion is not properly handled, what happens to that? What do you think? Where do you move? Do you don't move there? Anger. You go back to anger. Yes, but insecurity is not an emotion. Okay. I'm going to show you something. Let's sit here. I'm moving now to these, the, the happy one, the pleasant one. Because you guys are the death triangle. El triangulo de la muerte. All right? Uh, look, you, the, the three... The three feelings, these three feelings, are the feelings associated deeply with stress. And we will work about that later. But this is stress, okay? These three feelings combined. Okay, happiness. How are you? Are you happy? Yes? Okay. Body sensations. Uh, you feel active, excited, excited, nervous, and enthusiastic. Something else? The facial expressions is smile, your eyes. Light in your eyes. More things? Same. Very good. Now, painless. No pain. Yes? Uh, which is the reaction and the feelings that you associate with that? Hugging. Kissing, looking at people, making eye contact, being open, active, yes, yes, confidence. Now, which is the biological function? Why do prehistorical men and women needed this? Why did they need this? Look, if you're not happy, you don't laugh. If you don't laugh, you don't make babies. So this emotion makes sure that the human race is still on the surface of the earth. So we need this emotion to make sure that human beings stay here. Okay? So is this important? Is that important? Yes. Is that one important? Yes. And that one? Essential. Now, the thoughts, the thoughts associated to that. Present, past, future. More future. Because it allows you to think, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, you plan. You are happy because you want to do things. So it is more in the future. And now, this emotion, if this is not properly handled, what can happen? Look, 
This is this emotion. This emotion, um, we think that this is so good that it can have nothing which is bad. If this emotion is not properly handled, we find someone who, who is not able to empathize. Do you remember em empathy? Yesterday, with design thinking, is it necessary, empathy? Yes, it is. We live in society. If we are very happy all the time, we don't care about people who is sad. We want to start so many things, but we do nothing. Okay? Hyperactivity is related to this as well. Are you able to focus when you are very happy? You don't focus. Are you organized when you are very happy? When you have El Subidón? Are you very organized? Do you work? Not very much. So this is a problem. All right? So emotions, as I was saying, are these emotions good or bad? No. All of them are necessary. Okay? And now, what I really want to share with you is what we are going to see here now. Because we have been moving where these emotions go. And this is a problem. Um, and we will see. Look at that. We have fear. We have anger. We have sadness. Happiness is not there. It is not there because happiness is not related to stress. That's why I have not included that there. When we have fear, we go to anger. When we have anger, we move to sadness. But from sadness, we move back to anger. And we start this cycle. And what can happen? How many depressions do you have nowadays? Because if these emotions are not properly handled, they become a pathology. They become an illness which is the illness of the 21st century, sadness, because we are not able to handle these emotions and therefore we move to sadness and we stay there. Before going to sadness, we stay in anger. All these problems that we're having in schools right now, bullying, bullying comes from anger and anger really comes from fear. So those students, those bullies, are really scared. That's why they are attacking. If we don't understand this, we're not able to handle emotions. And therefore, we either end up in a violent situation, either in our lives or at school, or in sadness. That's why I, um, I made the sadness circle bigger. Because we enter this, this cycle, sadness, anger, anger, sadness, sadness, anger. We stay there. But in the end, when it, um, when it becomes a pathology, you end up with your depression. And from there, you have to start working for the causes. And the causes can either come from anger or fear. So this is why it is so important. OK, so now you understand emotions. You are experts on emotions. Well, as Christina has just said, emotions are not good or bad. They are simply necessary to ensure the survival of human beings in Earth. Well, now we're going to move on to a different topic, which is active listening. And I've got a simple question for you. Are you good listeners? Are you good at listening to other people when they are talking to you? Are you? And a second question, are you multitasking? Have you got the ability to do lots of things at the same time and quite efficiently? 
Well, uh, multitasking, as you probably know by now, is the opposite to mindfulness. Mindfulness is not doing lots of things at the same time, but just doing one thing at a time, just being present here and now, and focusing all your senses and your attention on what you're doing. So let's talk about active listening. Well, active listening is the prerequisite for learning to happen. If you want your students to learn, first they have to listen to you. That means that you have to teach your students how to listen actively. But before you do that, you need to learn to be active listeners yourselves. Well, if you look at this slide, you will realize that there are basic ingredients involved in the active listening. To actively listen to someone, you need to remove all distractions, which is the main distraction nowadays in your daily conversations with other people. Mobile phones are a tremendous, terrible, negative source of distraction. It doesn't really allow you to listen to what the other person is telling you. Listening to speakers, signs, and sounds is not just listening to the words that a person is saying. It's also paying attention to what's going on around that person non-verbal language, body language. Listening for feelings, as I said before, is listening in between the lines, that lots of things are left unsaid, and they are as important as the things that are being said. Observing body language, which is closely connected to listening to speak of signs and sound. Feeding back that you have understood. It's not just pretending that you're listening. Some people are really good at pretending that they are listening, but they are not really listening. So my own personal impression is that we are not very good at listening to, to other people. And then self-awareness and awareness of the other person's presence. So this is all about mindfully, actively listening to, to what other people say. Well, listening is not synonymous with hearing. Listening is intentional. There's intention, there's attention, and there's an attitude to listening, which is missing in the case of hearing. And, well, we do have the same difference in Spanish. Oír is not the same as escuchar. But the point is that active listening is the basis for fruitful dialogue and for rich relationships with other people. If we don't listen to other people, we are missing lots of good things to begin with. We are losing the talent and the uniqueness of the people that we come to meet, that we come to love. Well, these are some of the simple strategies that you should bear in mind if you want to become good listeners, active listeners. So pay attention. Ask pertinent questions not stupid or silly questions, just to make sure that the person you're talking to is feeling that she or he is being listened to. Look at the person who's talking. Follow directions. Don't talk. In active, listen, active listening, you don't interrupt the other person when he or she is talking and try to visualize what the other person is saying in your mind. So as you can see, you've got lots of things to do when you're actively listening to another person. 